Today at Hertha Berlin, we are facing Wolfsburg in the DFB Pokal second round and hoping to do a bit better than we have in previous seasons. Welcome back or welcome if you are new to the channel. We are here with Hertha Berlin, of course, and our FM22 journeyman, and we're in some pretty good form at the moment. In the last episode, we saw the matches against Milan and Stuttgart, and we haven't really lost or dropped many points since then, winning obviously quite a lot in the league, as we can see. We beat Monaco 1-0 in the Champions League. We did have a 0-0 draw against Bayer Leverkusen in the league, but then we beat St. Pauli 3-0. Uh, Rapid Vienne, we just absolutely battered 7-1. And Mans, we beat 4-1 in the last Bundesliga match. As I mentioned today, we will be facing Wolfsburg in the DFB Pokal and then Augsburg in the Bundesliga. At the moment, we are top of everything. Top of the UEFA Champions League group, three points clear there. We're two points clear at the top of the Bundesliga. Bayern Munich still not quite catching up with us. We have got a number of teams here. If we drop any points, we could be overtaken. But hopefully that isn't going to happen. And we're just going to continue on being brilliant. And this is the team we're going to use to try and do that against Wolfsburg. We've got Simon in goal, Castillo, Valdez, Mancini and Juardo as our back four. Diallo, Uanoi and Traore in midfield. Bedino and Tetrahoa out on the wings as normal and Luca up front. We have got a little couple of fitness issues. Uh, Funk's not quite fully fit. Uh, Calvin Phillips can play, but maximum 75 minutes. Um, and we've also, you know, he's not going to show up because I've hidden the unavailable players. Um, but Lacroix is also out for about five weeks. He got that injury about two days ago. So he's going to be out for a substantial sort of period of time, about a month, just over a month or so. So not available for us today. But I think that Mancini and Valdez in that back central partnership there should do absolutely fine. That's the plan anyway. We just hope it goes that way. Anyway, let's... um. Wow, Wolfsburg are in good form. I had a look as well. Wolfsburg are third in the Bundesliga. So they're like breathing down our necks as well. They're in really, really good form. I wasn't actually sure how they were doing. But as it turns out, quite well is the answer to that one. Hopefully today we can go and get a positive result against them. I feel like we do really need, finally, in this series, a DFB Pokal run because we haven't had the best time of it in our seasons in charge. Luca here trying to do that. Luca has done that. It is a 1-0 start for us. A 1-0 start for us is the first goal for us putting us up 1-0. I'm just having a look. Wolfsburg have had a lot of shots already. This goal, though, coming off of a corner, as is the Luke away. He got his head to it the first time, and it was saved by Van der Voort, but then managing to follow up on that one just to tap it home off of that corner, and that's a really, really good positive start for us. I am a little bit concerned that we seem to be giving up a lot in the way of possession and shots, and my answer to that is to go attacking. That's probably not the correct way forward, but it's what we're going with. I feel like, again, we're so much better in attack than we are in defence. Not that we have a bad defence at this point. Mancini, Lacroix, Valdez, um, Funk is obviously brilliant. Castillo is now a really, really good left back as well. He had a bit of a dodgy start to his season, to his life at Hertha Berlin last season. But he's been doing really, really well this season. And I had a look at him and his star rating suddenly shot up as well as he managed some really nice development which is great for us because obviously we've got uh michaelenko back there we've also got uh bastions who we signed in the summer transfer window but castillo is the man that is there at the moment and probably the man that's going to be staying there unless something changes massively in the next few weeks which i don't think is too likely i mean an injury could take him out the side obviously but for the moment, assuming he's fit, I think he's going to be the starting left back. I'm just looking down here and we have got a couple of yellow cards already. We're right in the middle of a highlight and I'm, I'm, you know, covering up the screen, which is not ideal. So I'll probably stop doing that. Gerardo managing to control that clearance. And now what a goal from Traore for his second goal of the season. Gerardo made that by sort of blocking that clearance as it came out. And managing to get the ball on the move. There's a big clearance there. Look, Gerardo just stopping that one, having none of that. Over to Tetrahoa. Traore controls the ball, looks for the spot, places that. 
lovely stuff and we are 2-0 up against Wolfsburg and it does look like it's going to be a good day for us which is exactly what we need like I said I feel like we need a DFB Pokal run at this point we've been knocked out two years running in the third round we really don't fancy a third year of that one uh, we quite like to progress past the third round this season I'm, I, just, I feel like when we've consistently been challenging for the bundesliga i mean did we challenge last season possibly that depends on your perspective i guess but we were second we've been second two years working i feel like we should be doing something in the cup competitions as well as the bundesliga at this point van der Voort clearing that one gerardo there to sweep up the loose ball once again and now bringing it forward on that right hand side he's going it alone he's crossed it into the box for Budino. can't quite get his head to it though castillo now crossing it in from the opposite side to Budino again who does get his head to it this time but it is off target and now that highlight has ended we are going to make a couple of substitutions lorenzo lucas looking really tired so pep ramos can come on he's been fantastic when we've brought him on as a substitute but dino's looking pretty tired on the opposite side as well so we probably take him off let's bring on schubert over on that side and just keep up what we're doing after that early sort of scare of wolfsburg having a lot of shots it's service resumed as normal normal service resumed that was that was a sentence it didn't work very well but i swear it was a sentence that's exactly how you say things castillo after me praising him earlier on has now just misplaced a pass which was pretty easy to not misplace and has let wolfsburg in so they can continue this attack here and wide open there you know simon managing to be more than equal to that one however and now it's a big long clearance from him up to pep ramos who gets his head to it down to schubert into techohoa skips past the tackle techohoa hits the post unable to make it three nil we probably should have converted that one we seem to have hit the post a lot in the last few weeks obviously you guys haven't seen that because i've played the matches in between episodes but we hit the post a ridiculous amounts of times and pep ramos there as it turns out offside which probably saves his blushes a little bit because he was dead central to the goal there and could have hit it either side and it would probably gone in instead of that missing the goal completely and i feel like another substitution is needed now i'm just looking down seeing who's tired castillo is looking quite tired now so we'll bring on bastions over in the left back position just to see out the last 15 minutes of this match or so we've got a huge amount of yellow cards this match five to be exact pep ramos has come and he's got a uh, a yellow card not straight away but pretty much straight away we will tell the team to add but add that instruction tell them to stay on their feet not that it probably matters too much in the 88th minute really but maybe it can prevent someone sliding in double footed when we're two nil up in the last five minutes or so that would be a bit of a stupid thing to do schubert here just latching on to that ball that was nodded down by pep ramos although apparently it's not going to count that's annoying triore there playing that one forward to pep ramos it was pep ramos that was offside who just passing it down tapping it down to schubert for him to convert he did his bit really nicely unfortunately um ramos offside there so it's not going to count but it does mean we finished the match 2-0 we can't ask for a huge amount more than that we're more than happy with that we'll take the win on the night and we'll see us through to the third round of the dfb pokal and i swear if we get by munich again i might actually scream you will genuinely have to cover your ears if that happens this is a thing as well um man man united are now scouting tetrahoa obviously he was wanted by real madrid he might still be wanted by real madrid uh arsenal liverpool man united and rb leipzig are the teams that want him we're looking at about 109 million pounds apparently no one has come in with a bid for him yet despite all of this interest and the entirety of the summer transfer window we have still yet to have to refuse a bid for tetrahoa because no one seems to be uh, putting their money where their mouth is. I'm quite happy with that because I don't particularly want him to leave. He's still got a fairly lengthy contract at the club. I think it's running until 2034, which is another four years in in-game time. Um, so I'm, I'm quite happy if he wants to stay at the club. He's obviously a brilliant, brilliant player. I don't really particularly want him to leave. He's going to be ridiculously hard to replace. I've got a couple of replacements in mind. But they're not ones I want to make. I'd much rather keep Tetrahoa. 
unfortunately that might be taken out of our hands i think and this is the dfb pokal third round draw we're going to see who we've got st paulie the first out of the hat they're going to be playing you are you are you i don't know how you say that union berlin playing fc cone the goat club by a leverkusen against a dynamo dresden who are in the bundesliga 2 stugart against us so we'll be playing away at stugart i'm pretty sure we've beaten stugart fairly recently um so hopefully that's the time we can actually get through and get past them into the fourth round of the dfb pokal that would be absolutely lovely to see we have now got a focus of course on our next match which is against Augsburg it is tomorrow in in-game time obviously so we will just get over to that one now sort out the team and I'll be back in a second so a couple of changes from the side that just won against Wolfsburg then we've got Simon in goal Bastians Valdez Mancini and Jurado although actually let's just change that back to Funk that's much better. Diallo, Silva and Traore in midfield. Bedino and Renan out on the rings with Luca up front. After I just said that Castillo probably wouldn't be dropped, Bastions has come to us and said that he should be uh, playing more games. And then after looking at the team dynamics and agreed playing time, he's actually meant to be a regular starter. And Castillo is meant to be a squad player. So we'll play him if he's absolutely awful then he'll be dropped regardless of what his playing time is meant to be because we're not going to go and give up a potential Bundesliga title just to play Bastions but equally he's got some really really good potential so hopefully he can come in to decide perform well and he can have his playing time I don't really mind which one of my high potential players I play as long as they perform in the team anyone can play i don't mind who it is we obviously have our preferred starting 11 but that aside i think we've got much better squad depth this season so when we have got players not performing or players injured we're not looking as um tired out we're not looking like we're gonna start underperforming like we did last season we still had a good season last season but i feel like the squad depth is much superior this season if only just in numbers even if not in quality i was about to say we've let Augsburg in here and that was a little bit concerning but as it turns out that was an awful finish but dino has just gone down in the box as we put that free kick in there and it does look like we're going to be having a bit of a word with philip once again philip says penalty awarded and i'm assuming this is lorenzo luca taking this one is it yes it is lorenzo luca i don't know why i didn't think he was the number 27 uh, he's obviously been the number 27 obviously <laughs> ever since we've been at the club but for some reason his number just completely escaped my mind then so penalty done penalty completed and scored by luca and we go one nil up on the evening which will send us top of the bundesliga again if i change this over here back to the league table what it should be as we can see we're now two points clear once again at the top of the bundesliga obviously uh we're playing our game a day later i think because of the dfb pokal potentially because of champions league etc etc um so the other teams have already played so we know a win today here will keep us top which is lovely fully in our in our hands this season as long as we keep winning games we're not going to have a problem hopefully the teams around us will start dropping some points as well obviously we've got to play all of them as well so we could be the ones that make them drop points renan's just played a beautiful assist into luca luca of course having a no problem at all converting that one for our second goal on the 12th minute valdez over to bastian here silver Badino. it's kind of tackled but it just falls to renan who crosses it squares it into the box to luca for him to tap home for our second goal it's all looking pretty decent for her for Berlin. Traore with a corner here trying to get that one onto Luca's head for his hat-trick with inside 15 minutes. That would have been brilliant. I feel like he'll probably get his hat-trick this evening unless we decide to take him off at any point um, or he gets injured. Let's, let's not even tempt that. If I say he's going to definitely get his hat-trick this evening, he will break his leg or something and be out for the rest of the season. So, FM22, if you can hear me, just ignore everything I just said. Lorenzo Luca, it, yeah, it doesn't matter if he scores or not at this point. Silva here with a free kick on the edge of the area. It's rifled in by Fernando Silva. He's turned out to be a pretty decent purchase as well this season. Coming in to be our box-to-box -box midfielder. 
I thought he might be a bit of a rotation option, but as it turns out, he's turning very, very quickly into a nailed on starter. I have a quick look at him at half time as well, so you guys can see um, exactly his attributes and stuff for those of you who might not have seen it before. Just go over here to the tactics. We can see he's already increased ability because he was two and a half star when he got here. He's valued at 30 to 41 million pound now. We obviously brought him in for 4.2 million from um, Uruguay, which it, as it turns out is quite a good purchase. I feel like 4.2 million for a pretty nailed on box to box midfielder when some of the players we were looking at were going to cost us a big sum of money. I'm quite happy with that transfer, if I'm honest. Once again, we're on the attack here. It is a throw-in over on the left-hand side for Bastions. Luca now on the ball. Traore poking that one through to Renan. Through to Funk. Funk through on goal. Can't quite get any sort of power or placement, really, on that shot. He is obviously a bright back, so I'm not expecting him to be the best finisher in the world. That ball from the goalkeeper has been played over the top of our defenders, and Augsburg are in here. Although we have regrouped pretty quickly and doing a pretty good job of defending this. Forcing them into a shot from range which comes to absolutely nothing. Brilliant stuff from us. Mancini's on a yellow card. Let's tell him to ease off tackles quickly before this highlight starts. Bedino into Luca. Luca desperately trying to get that hat-trick I mentioned. Not quite managing it so far but he is desperate to get his third goal. Bedino's going to have to come off now. We're going to bring on Schubert over on that left-hand side just because Bedino's looking a little bit tired. And we're trying to keep everyone as fit as humanly possible this season. We've obviously got a lot of games. If we're going to stay in the DFB Pokal and we're going to progress in the Champions League, then we're going to need to rotate as much as we can. Bastion is having a 6.3 here. You've asked to come in, lad. We've given you the game time. You're letting yourself down a little bit here. Diallo is going to come off anyway. Phillips can come on. And then we'll make another substitution. I'm just not sure where yet. Um, Popsai, we could bring you on, but I think actually we could bring on Pep Ramos. Let's just bring uh, Silva on. He can come on to replace the already carded Mancini in the centre of defence just to see out the end of the match. Triori with another corner into Lorenzo Luca. He does finally get that third goal he's been looking for all game, completing his hat trick just <laughs> with 15 minutes left. It took him less than 50 minutes to get the first two. It's taken him the rest of the match almost. And a full hour to get his third. But he has finally got it. He, he's fantastic at corners. I don't know what we're going to do when, if we do eventually have to sell him or he starts declining. I think he's 30 at the moment. We've obviously got some good players coming through. The likes of Pep Ramos is going to be a... At some point will be our main striker. It's just not going to be this season. While Lorenzo Luca is still playing, I don't think... Any striker is going to get into the team past him. Triore through on goal here. Not managing to finish that one as effectively as I would have hoped. I genuinely think you could bring pretty much any striker in at this point, And they're just not going to fit our system as well as Lorenzo Luca does. He's got such a good affinity with the two wingers. Tetrahoa and Badino over on either side. That it would be silly to replace him at this point. It would cost us a stupid sum of money to get a player that's going to score as many goals as him as well. Um, I mean, he's twice broken his own record now in the last two seasons for most goals scored in a season. And that's exactly why he's an absolute poacher in the box as well. If there is a loose ball, Lorenzo Luca is having it. There is no reason for him to be scoring that goal there. That was messy as all hell. Funk playing it over to Renan. Renan, it's kind of just bobbled up. Try always, I think, tried to have a shot. It's hit their defender and it's bobbled up in the air. And Lorenzo Luca, obviously quickest to react. Tall as all heck. He's seven foot tall. You can't teach that. And the man puts away four goals and gets a 10 rating in this match and sends us back top of the league with a plus 20 goal difference. That's just ridiculous. We look brilliant this season. I really hope that is not famous last words. And now I've said that we'll go on some awful run of form. Touch wood. I think we should be okay. Leicester apparently launching a Valdez bid now as well. Worth 64 million. Um, this is going to be the problem. It's going to be if all our players decide to leave. I'm not so worried about Yusef Kone leaving at the end of his contract, if I'm completely honest. He's not really going to be part of the first team at two-star potential ability, I don't think. Not with the players we've got at the club. 
I feel like we'll be all right without him. We've obviously got lots of matches coming up. Uh, the next DFB, the DFB Pokal third round isn't until all the way down here in February. We're currently in November. That's a little bit of a gap between matches, but all right, fine. We've got our Champions League matches. We'll probably come back, I imagine, around the Milan match, maybe for Milan and Union Berlin. Obviously, our local rivals. I feel like we're pretty, unless something changes dramatically in all of that, um, we're pretty much nailed on to go through in the Champions League. So we'll just come back for the last match in the campaign against Milan. If you have enjoyed today's episode, of course, guys, please do drop a like down below the video. It does really, really help out with the YouTube algorithm pushing this video out to some people who might not have seen it yet and if you're not yet subscribed to the channel just because you haven't got round to it or maybe you're new and have just found this series then please do hit the subscribe button we're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers we passed a thousand probably at the time you're watching it a couple of weeks ago um i'm having to record quite a far bit in advance because i'm actually getting married and then going on a honeymoon so there's going to be about a week and a half where i don't touch football manager hopefully it doesn't come back and punish me for that i will let you know when i'm back recording live depending when you're seeing this it could be very soon i should be back recording live around the 7th 8th of june or so ramble over though thank you very much for watching today guys check out the video that's on the screen now and i'll see you over for the end of our champions league group stage campaign in the next episode Bye bye for now